Bienvenidos, queridos amigos, a su programa ¿Qué pasa New Orleans? Un programa especial en el día de hoy, Felipe. Así es, Javier, nos encontramos en un lugar muy especial, como tú lo has dicho, sabroso también. Vamos a disfrutar de algo muy rico. Para aquellos amantes del buen ron, hoy estamos precisamente en la fábrica más antigua, la destilería de ron más antigua de los Estados Unidos, de ron de alta calidad. Así es, Javier, y qué mejor que hacerlo aquí en New Orleans. Es algo que tenemos aquí local y que los invitamos a todos ustedes que lo vengan a visitar. Si usted no tiene la menor idea de cómo es el proceso del ron, aquí se lo vamos a estar enseñando en qué pasa. Asimismo, para aquellos eh, televidentes que son de Guatemala, de Cuba, de Nicaragua, donde el ron es precisamente uno de sus productos principales, pues aquí le vamos a traer un poquito de eso, de la historia de esta fábrica, de la historia del ron y del proceso, de cómo se hace. Felipe, no tomes muchas ideas y no empieces a hacer ron bueno, en tu casa. Yo, yo miro la cara de Johnny, que ya está muy contento. Lo primero que me dijo Johnny, ¿puedo bajar el 12, el, pa el paquete de 12 de Coca-Cola que tengo en el carro para empezar a mezclar? <risa> no, pero hay ron aquí que no se debe mezclar porque es tan sabroso y tan bueno que no se debe de ni mezclar. Así que vamos a traerles el proceso entero de la fabricación del ron de alta calidad de Old New Orleans Rum. Así que, ¿qué te parece si entramos? Perfecto, me parece súper bien. Y usted entra con nosotros. And here I am with Jason Coleman. He's the marketing director for New Orleans, All New Orleans Rum. How are you, Jason? Great, great. Happy to have you guys here. Así que estoy con Jason Coleman. Él es el director de Relaciones Públicas de uh, All New Orleans Rum. Um, Jason, the first question I have is you are a New Orleanian. Uh, you're, you're in the best place you could work at because this is like a brand from New Orleans, right? Absolutely. Um, tell us about the story, the history of the New Orleans Rum. Well, really, our founder, James Michalopoulos, he's loved distilling and brewing his entire life. He started in 1995. Uh, we sold our first bottle in 99, and it's really just grown since then. Um, expanding our products, expanding our offerings, but we're still really trying to stay connected to the city and just represent what New Orleans is all about. Así que el fundador que es James Michalopoulos, él empezó, él es un artista que empezó en el año 95 y empezó a destilar eh, casi caseramente eh, el ron y luego empezó a expandirse y a, a, a donde estamos ahora, que es la factoría. How was that process, uh, that expansion process? Um, Slow but steady. Um, we've always tried to expand while keeping our quality up, keeping the product that we have the same. Um, it's really just been a labor of love and just making sure that we serve people what we'd want to drink ourselves. How did he come up with the, the idea of the rum itself? Um, actually traveling throughout Europe, he had a friend that created her own spirits and her own infusions and he came back with uh, a love of distilling and creating that. He's always loved rum. But um, his success with his art and with his other ventures gave him the opportunity to really uh, come get this place and really start creating what he loves on a commercial level. You think the, the um, us producing sugar cane had something to do with it too? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And rum, um, as much as south of here in Louisiana, we have great uh, sugar cane. And so it's one of the most locally sourced spirits we can find. Everything that we put in the bottle comes from here. Me está diciendo él es que eh, precisamente el artista eh, empezó allá cuando empezó eh, caseramente con la idea de eh, precisamente crear un producto que fuera de New Orleans. Como tenía eh, aquí la caña de azúcar y la caña de azúcar de tan buena calidad, pues empezó a destilarla en su casa. Él también era un amante, digamos, un, un ha sido del ron y le gustaba el ron y así empezó eh, a expandirse poco a poco la idea tomó la idea de precisamente de una amiga que estaba en el, en el extranjero overseas eh, que ella ya hacía su, sus um, destilerías en su casa y entonces así fue como surgió la idea de Old New Orleans Rum. So the process um, starts right here and it ends right here. I know you get the, the sugar cane already processed in the molasa in the first press. Yes. Tell me uh, about that. We get our sugar cane from Thibodeau, Louisiana, right down the road. Um, we know the mill it comes from, the fields it comes from. Basically, we get the pressed sugar cane to juice. They boil it once to get the solid stuff out, the plant matter. Then we take it from there. We make rum from the molasses. So we're doing everything A to Z. And the molasses is like a very, very thick um, liquid still. But uh, like when they say you move like molasses, it's just that, right? Absolutely true. <laughs> Absolutely true. Well, how about you show us around a little bit and, and a little bit of the process, how it, how it all goes through. Great. I'd love to. All right. So let's go. Join me to see the process of making orange rum. Jason, this, this is where the process starts, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Tell me about these two big tanks. So these tanks hold about 2,000 gallons of molasses. Um, this is where we store it. It doesn't really last long. 
Once we hook up the tubes that you're seeing here, we start a pump and it pumps all the way to the back of the distillery where we continue with the fermentation. Me dice que aquí, aquí hay 2000 galones de melaza, ese primer producto que viene del primer prensado de la caña de azúcar. Traen la melaza aquí y como les dije, la caña de azúcar es de aquí de Luisiana, precisamente de la de Tibero. Traen la primera prensada con esa melaza aquí y estos dos tanques, eh, bueno, la melaza no se queda aquí por mucho rato, me dice él. Estos dos tanques van a bombear la melaza para, lo, digamos, lo, los establecimientos que hay en el interior de la, de la factoría, de la fábrica. Así que vamos a ver un poco de eso. Starts with the molasses. This is uh, what I was telling you about earlier. This is a special bee cut molasses that's only been boiled once. Mm -hmm. um, other rum companies start with molasses that's been boiled up to 10 times. So we like to retain the natural sugars. We don't have to add anything, any sweeteners, and it's just uh, a great base for a great rum. It starts here, um, then we'll add some water and a little bit of yeast to start creating the alcohol. Mm -hmm. After we distill it, this is what we call a polished distillate. And it's clear because everything comes out of the still clear. This is very strong, very high proof. After we let it sit in barrels, the uh, distillate's gonna darken up, and that's when it really becomes the barrel-aged rum that we know and love. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually going to pull the color out from the inside of the barrels. We char them. It's number three, so it's very medium char. But that's what we found gives the best flavor and the best character to our rum. Okay. Uh, besides the aged rum, when you have that the clear rum, what's the process for the clear rum? It's basically the same as the age before it enters the barrel. It's going to leave the still, and we're going to add a special kind of water to it that brings the proof okay. down. Okay. Yes. Um, and that's going to make it taste better, a little smoother, um, more appropriate for cocktails. Mm -hmm. And from there, we're going to filter it and put it in a bottle for you to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, el proceso de la destilación me está diciendo él que bueno, esta es la melaza que es la, la, la primera prensada de la caña de azúcar. El proceso de, de, de destilamiento pues empieza y eh, antes de llevarlo a lo que son las barricas de roble, que son precisamente de roble americano, este, pues se, se añade un poco de agua para bajar el nivel de alcohol y así es como se obtiene lo que es la, el ron blanco que le decimos. O si no, se pone en barricas de roble por tres o por más años que se deja macerar ahí con, con el, la, la barrica de roble y por eso es que obtienen este color este, pues medio ámbar y, y bueno y, y el sabor ese de eh, el añejo del ron. Así que vamos a seguir en nuestro recorrido. So I know you have a special batch of a rum that's been uh, aged for 10 years. Yes. The story of that rum is unique because it's very linked to our city and um, part of what happened some years ago. Tell me about it. Absolutely. With um, Hurricane Katrina, we got about eight feet of water uh, for over a week wiped out 15% of our barrel inventory. And when we came back, we really had to say, what are we gonna do here? How are we gonna treat the rest of these barrels? And uh, with the inventory that survived, we decided to take the choicest barrels and age them for 10 years. Um, they're upstairs in our loft. We don't touch them. We only open one a year. That's about 750 bottles of rum. And uh, it's really our pride and joy behind surviving the storm, coming back, and actually being stronger and better than ever. Jason, me comenta una historia muy interesante. Hasta aquí llegó el agua cuando Katrina, precisamente ocho pies de altura. Eh, lo que es la donde se prueba la calidad del ron, eh, el cuarto donde se prueba la calidad del ron está totalmente sumergida y otras eh, facil, facilidades de aquí de la factoría. Um, pero lo que sí eh, se salvaron fueron algunas barricas de eh, precisamente del ron que ahora tiene 10 años y por eso es que ellos han mantenido esas botellas y abren solamente una caja al año eh, donde hay 750 botellas eh, precisamente para el consumo de aquí porque aquí tienen como un museo donde la gente puede venir y puede también ver el proceso del ron que le estamos enseñando en el día de hoy así que bueno es una experiencia única que está muy ligada a nuestra historia precisamente la historia de Katrina y de cómo sobrevivimos eh, esa calamidad Aquí estamos ya enfrente a uno de los tanques, el tanque de fermentación de la melaza. This is, uh, you said, a fermentation tank? Yes, absolutely. This is uh, where we pump the molasses that we spoke about earlier. Add warm water and a little bit of yeast and let nature take its course, where yeast will actually eat up the sugar and uh, create alcohol. How long is the process? Um, five to seven days, depending on the temperature and just the external conditions. So the fermentation más o menos dura de eh, cinco a siete días. Do you have to have any particular conditions like well, humidity or? We're lucky in Louisiana because it's great in a humid environment, a hot, humid environment. That's just uh, what nature gave us. So. Great, for, great for pirates. <laughs> Dice él que aquí, bueno, el, el clima ayuda mucho porque el clima húmedo y cálido de Louisiana precisamente ayuda a las condiciones de fermentación. Así que that's a good thing. This is a pot still. So this is where the um, 
fermented molasses water and yeast will then go for this next step in the process. Which is? We start heating it um, to get a higher alcohol content. This is where it all starts. The liquid that's coming out of this tube that's in the tank is called a low wine. And that's going to be going towards rum, but it's going to be weaker and it's not going to be as round of a taste. It's uh, not as pleasant as the stuff that ends up in the bottle. Right. It's not as thick anymore with the liquid that comes out. Have you added water yet or not yet? Yes. When we add the yeast, water, and molasses, we're going to add a little more water into this just to fill it out, round it out, and uh, really give it the chance to heat up without just burning all the alcohol off. What's the temperature that should be on? Um, in between 86 and 90 degrees. So we usually stay at the lower end, right at 86.9. Eh, aquí precisamente es donde viene ya eso destilado eh, y se va a calentar con una temperatura de 86 a 90 grados para precisamente provocar que el, el grado de alcohol pues, eh, se reproduzca, sea mayor el grado de alcohol. Eh, ya el líquido que sale de aquí, como tiene agua de, de la primera destilada y se ha añadido agua aquí también, pues es un líquido que es, eh, es mucho, más, eh, mucho menos denso. De... This is a really cool spot right here. This is um, what we use in one of the processes that we use to filter our rums. We actually filter it three times. Um, this is very similar to what everyone will have in their homes um, in a Brita filter. It's called activated charcoal or activated carbon. And what it does is um, it's sustainable, it's reusable, so it goes into us being green. We can actually use this, run rum through it for two batches and then we send it back to the man that sells it to us and he can burn it in a furnace at about 1200 degrees and send it back to us. So once he burns off all the bad stuff that's been filtered out, he can send it right back and we can keep reusing it until it turns into a powder. This is eh, carbono activado, con esto se filtra el ron y precisamente una de las cosas más importantes y que la, nuestro programa se siente orgulloso siempre de apoyar es que re, reciclan este, este carbono activado eh, después que lo usan incluso para dos, eh, para dos veces, eh, donde hacen el, el ron, pues lo pueden volver a mandar a donde lo adquirieron. Ahí lo, ha, lo hacen una, un tratamiento químico donde todas las impurezas que se recogieron eh, filtrando el ron, eh, se quedan allá, vuelven a hacer esto y lo vuelven a... Así que es un proceso, es un producto, digamos, que nunca eh, muere. O ven, ya esto pasa a las barricas de roble. Si ya es un, es un ron que va a tener tres años o más de tres años, pues aquí va a permanecer por tres años. Estos son barricas de roble americano, precisamente porque esa madera es la que le da el gusto eh, al ron, al ron de New Orleans. ¿no? Este, son precisamente barricas de bourbon y son las más adecuadas o las que han encontrado más adecuadas para la alta calidad que tiene el Old New Orleans rum. So Jason, here's where we're going to let the laws of physics, if anything, right, <laughs> do their course, right? Um, you told me that it's going to be heated up to a temperature that's going to evaporate and get up there with, uh, uh, and it's going to, uh, again, condense mm -hmm. and get to those tanks over there. Tell me the process. Absolutely. We take the low wines that we had from the big pot still, we throw them in here, we heat them up slowly, um, and when it reaches the evaporation point of the alcohol that we're trying to get, it'll actually turn into vapor and rise up this column. And then at the very top, it's going to be cold, so the vapor condenses into a liquid again, and that's where we gather it into the barrels you see behind the still. Okay. Jason me está explicando que precisamente ahí viene ese, ese low wine, que es el producto que teníamos antes. Viene aquí, se va a calentar aún más, es un proceso bien eh, despacio, lento, de calentamiento. Se va a evaporar, va a subir por estas columnas, por eso que se llama columna. Sube la columna, allí la temperatura va a estar súper fría, precisamente para que se vuelva a condensar. O sea que esto ya es las leyes de la física. Ahí se va a condensar y va a pasar a los tanques donde ya el, el, ese líquido tiene precisamente una un alcohol, un grado de alcohol muchísimo más elevado. Jason, you, you told me that this is exact, it's unique, it's an antique, if, if you will. Um, it has to do with perfume? Yes, this is actually an old perfume still that our owner and founder found. Um, he purchased it to make the rum and it actually worked out beautifully. It's how we maintain our unique taste. Um, it's a different process from anyone in the world. Mm -hmm. Lo que me explica él es precisamente que esto precisamente se usaba para destilar los perfumes. 
um, it has, you told me, 100 years or over 100 years? Absolutely, right over 100 years. Entonces, el artista que, que es el, el, el que inventó el, el New Orleans Run precisamente, este, usó esto precisamente como un método para hacer ese, ese proceso de evaporación y condensación. Eh, no es precisamente para el Run, pero eso es lo que hace único al proceso del de Old New Orleans Run. Finally, finishing the product, Jason, right? Yes, yes. This is where we place the labels on the bottles and the rum into the bottles. Y precisamente es donde van a etiquetar el ron con las diferentes etiquetas, depende del ron que sea, si es ron blanco, si es ron añejo. Um, you place the bottle on that end, you said, and you, the machine turns, and then, it, then this kind of rolls, right? Yes, we're going to hand place the bottle onto the conveyor belt. It's going to take it down the line and to the uh, sticker pad. Mm -hmm where the bottle will actually be spun and the two labels will be placed on until it reaches the end of the line. And that's the end of the process, what goes after that? After that, we're going to hand inspect every bottle, uh, make sure that the labels are straight and place a fleur de lis medallion on the neck of the bottle by hand. That's kind of the proof of inspection and uh, the quality control that we have. What about the cap? After we place the label on the bottle, we're actually going to bring it to the filling machine. It's going to measure out 750 milliliters or a liter, depending on the bottle. We uh, use natural cork to stop our bottles, and then we place a quality control sleeve on top, put it in a heating element, and it shrinks to seal the bottle to make sure that no one tampers with our rum. Is there any reason why you use the natural cork? We found it's the best way to seal. Um, it's a little more sustainable and green than using only plastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good way to make that airtight seal on the bottle to maintain our quality of our product while still being a little green and giving back. Precisamente me está explicando que después que ya las botellas están etiquetadas, se llevan ahí para este, medir que tengan los 750 mililitros o que tenga el litro. Este, y a partir de ahí entonces este, se, lo que hacen es ponerle un corcho. ¿Por qué el corcho? Que no se utiliza mucho para el ron, pero ellos utilizan el corcho precisamente para sellar, para que ese aire no se escape y para eh, controlar y para mantener la calidad de New Orleans ron. Jason, almost 18, well, 18 years, almost 20 years, the company New Orleans Rum. Uh, being made and I see you were telling me up there what do we have? It's really interesting to look at um, for about the first 13-14 years uh, we changed labels quite a bit changed bottle shapes and eventually we settled down we said we have our formula we know the rum that we want to make and we want people to recognize that rum so we want to create an identity and we really got our label stuck to it and now it's the label that people see and recognize on shelves today. Before we leave, um, Jason, well, él me está diciendo, let me translate first. Él me está diciendo que precisamente en 20 años que lleva la compañía, esas son todas las formas de botellas que se han usado y todas las etiquetas que el dueño precisamente como es artista ha querido cambiar y renovar todo el tiempo. I love that trumpet, uh, <laughs> trumpet looking bottle. Um, ahí tienen precisamente una botella que parece una trompeta que es muy, uh, digamos, alusiva a lo que es New Orleans. Jason, I would really like for you to show me the spices. I know this is like a, a Coca-Cola secret, but at least show me the spices that have been used. And I know it's a very exact formula that you all follow and you've been consistent for all these years. Uh, is that possible? I can show you some of them. All right. So él nos va a enseñar precisamente uno de los secretos de eh, ese ron que tiene especies. Va a enseñar todas las especies, pero nunca nos va a enseñar la fórmula de cómo se hace el Old New Orleans run. Y aquí estamos en el lugar de los secretos. This is the secret place of where all the spices are going to be mixed in the exact measure to make the spice rum. Is that right? Absolutely. This is um, where we experiment, this is where we infuse, and this is where we see what exactly we want to use. But more importantly, these are the spices that go into our Cajun spice rum. And I know you um, have mentioned that the, the spice rum is all natural spices. Yes, we don't use sugaring, um, syrups. We actually use a bag of spices and let it sit in the rum for up to two weeks to infuse and really pull out those natural flavors. And here we have a whole bunch of spices that they are labeled. I, I mean, some of them I can't even read the label anymore, but I'm sure that uh, the secret uh, of the formula is kept somewhere, right? Yes, and not here. <laughs> and not here. <laughs> Así que le digo yo bromeando que precisamente eh, tienen todas la, lo, las especies, tienen su, están eh, con su label y eh, con su etiqueta, quiero decir. Y precisamente algunas no se pueden ni leer lo que es. Así que mira, para eso el secreto no nos vamos a enterar en el día de hoy. Dice que el, que el secreto está guardado y no está guardado aquí. Y llegamos a la parte más divertida. We got to the fun part. Uh, Jason, what do we have here? We have all four of our rums and one of our newer products, Ginger Roo, for you guys. Let's go. So out. this will be the crystal. This is the Old New Orleans crystal. It's our unaged, our youngest rum. This will be the Old New Orleans amber rum, which is um, three years. 
This is the Old New Orleans Cajun Spice Rum, which is up to five years in spiced. And this is the 10 year. This is the Old New Orleans, our special. We don't market it, and this is just here at the distillery for everyone to enjoy. This is our newer product, Ginger Roo. We start with the base of our clear, our crystal rum, add ginger juice, infuse it with cayenne, some other spices, and then we carbonate it so it's ready to go right out of the bottle. I think we should start tasting from uh, from right here, the ginger root. What do you think, uh, Felipe? I want to leave this for last, Javier, because oh, okay, I, okay. I, I, yeah, I had it before, and it's really good. You know, it's very refreshing. Así que nosotros vamos a tratar un poco de todo de esos rones. Vamos a degustar el buen ron, a probar un poco de esos de todos esos rones. Este, um, before we get to do that, before we get to taste the rum, and we want to talk a little bit about. Um, um, how to get in touch with uh, New Orleans rum. Um, we want to remind you always to drink responsibly. Queremos uh, recordarle como siempre que beba eh, responsablemente y como dice Felipe, eh, si bebe. No maneje, esa es la ley, hay que respetarla. Siempre mantenga un conductor designado, que esa es la ley. Recuerde, algo muy importante. That's right. Designated driver. We have a designated driver that is Johnny. Johnny's behind the camera. Uh, can we trust him, Johnny, man? Yeah, John, Johnny's behind the camera. He's not drinking today. So, vamos a tomar y vamos a degustar estos rones. We're going to have a little sample of each one of these quality rums. How to get in touch with uh, Old New Orleans rum. I know that you do tours in the factory, too. Absolutely. You can give us a call at 504-945-9400. Uh, we run tours 12, 2, and 4 o'clock Monday through Friday, and 2 and 4 on Saturdays. Um, you also have a Facebook page, very important. Absolutely. Um, Facebook.com slash Old New Orleans Rum. You can follow us on Twitter too at, at New Orleans Rum. Old New Orleans Rum. Please like the page because this is not only about the rum that is a very, very high quality rum. I know because I come from Cuba and I, I tried the best rums in the world. Um, but also because it's the historicity of, of the whole thing, the culture behind it, our culture that we are very proud, our culture of New Orleans. So we're going to leave you with that. Thank you, Jason, so much for having us today. Absolutely. Thank you guys for coming by. Muchas gracias, Jason, por tenernos en esta noche. Quiero que todos hagan un like a la página de Facebook, All New Orleans Rum, y que sigan en contacto, porque esto no se trata solamente del de el ron, que es de altísima calidad, se lo puedo decir yo que vengo de Cuba y he probado los mejores rones, sino que también se trata de la cultura y de la historia eh, que tiene este ron, que está muy ligada y muy vinculada a la cultura de New Orleans. ¿Verdad, Felipe? Así es, Javier, es algo muy bonito de tener aquí en la ciudad de New Orleans y qué mejor que consumir lo de aquí, local, ¿no? Gracias, Jason. Thank you very much. And thank you for having us.